Honey? Yes, dear? Could you please pass me the Grey Poupon? Is it that time again? Yes. It's time for the Johnny Mac Show. Officially launched in 2018, the Johnny Mac Show follows trending topics that are molding both the American and global societies together. We thank you for tuning in as usual, as the topics brought to you today are what you care about the most. Be sure to subscribe on the Johnny Max Breaker Show, and check your local times and listings on iHeartRadio. And now, without any further ado, we bring you the man himself. Here's Johnny Mac. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Teddy Lee DaVinci, for that intro. We are here, we live, we live on... Uh, we're on Facebook Live right now. We're also live streaming this. Um, we're also on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, anywhere that you can get podcasts at. You can definitely check. This is the Johnny Mac Show. This is a special edition of the Johnny Mac Show where we're doing the uh, series about making Florida blue. Um, our last guest we had was uh, Kaiser Anakin, uh, running for the Senate. Today, we're going to have Miss Yvonne Hayes Henson. Democrat running for the U.S. Congressional District Three, and uh, she's going to uh, going to Washington. How you doing today, Mister Yvonne? I'm doing good. How are you, Mister John Matt? Hey, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. All right. Um, so did a little bit of research on you. Kind of looked at some things and uh, did a lot of research. You gave me my money's worth here. It was uh, it was a lot. I see. Um, I don't know. We can start all the way on. I see. Um, I see you were born in Gainesville, Florida. Um, Look like you graduated um, 1971 and 72. You was a graduate graduate of the University of Florida. Is yes, that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and uh, that you taught um, you taught children nutritional behavior, like in New York, Miami, Atlanta, and um, talk to me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So I taught children with neurological and emotional problems. Uh, I taught in New York at both seas, and uh, I taught mostly in Miami. Okay. And uh, a few years in Atlanta. Oh, wow. Yeah, but um, when I retired, I retired as a school principal. I had been a principal 15 years. Right. After being uh, a staffing specialist, a counselor, and an assistant principal. So... um, I've had a large variety of experiences in my lifetime. And a lot of education, too. Mostly education. I'm a lifelong educator. Right. And even when I've ventured into other uh, careers, uh, education was always at the forefront of my uh, intentions. Right, right. And as I did my research about you, I was uh, understanding that what you're going to be bringing, because what you're doing for your position, you're going to, you're not going to Tallahassee, you're going to Washington. Uh, Yes, exactly. And you're going to Washington. And what you're going to be bringing to Washington is that education, your know-how, because we all know right now, it's not just in these elections, us being Floridians, I'm a single father as well. We know that education is, this is a big deal. cornerstone of our America. Right, right. It is. It is what makes the difference between uh, a prosperous, a prosperous life, and a, a non-prosperous life. Uh, education is the great equalizer, as one uh, politician used to say. Right. Now, let me ask you this: What immediate changes, if? Any, I don't know how fast and how it works. I know it's a lot, large team. But what immediate changes would you say or that you see that you would be bringing to the table that we want the listeners to know? Well, first of all, health care. Uh, although I'm an educator, I think health care is our first priority. Um, we've got people dying because they can't, for lack of health care, for right. lack of quality, good health care. And uh, there has been a bill uh, introduced every decade by uh, Senator John Conyers. He's no longer there now, but he had been uh, championing this uh, program for some time, H.R. 676, and it could literally change the way we live our lives. Right. Uh, not only uh, going to the doctor, 
but taking care of our bodies, putting good foods in our bodies, right. knowing nutritional um, remedies for our body. Right, because I've seen that that's what that's one thing that you're an advocate for yes. is that you want to bring in the exercising, the dieting, eating right, taking mm-hmm. care of your body. Not mm-hmm. just one of these politicians is going to just sit there and say, "Hey, you know, we need to do this and that." You actually you acted out. You've been around children, kids, and I educated. I know know that nutrition has an effect on how they think, how they grow, how well they perform in school. Exactly. Or lack of performance has much to do. It's because of my experiences. Right. And back when I was a principal before tests, I would change the way the cafeteria fed our children breakfast. Wow, really? Say that again for the people in the back. Yeah, we need to hear that. Uh, Before every test, every mandated test, I would change the menu for breakfast for our children before they went to take a test because I knew the effect food would have on their performance. Right, food does. That affects how you think. It affects how how the whole day goes. What you feed your children, what you feed your children before they go to school, what you feed your children during the day has an effect on how they behave. And it's funny, I I, I listen to, you know, we dealing with the politics and watching these different races and different people that's running and so forth. That's one thing that I don't hear, I haven't heard nobody bring, which is, I know as as a parent, you know, my daughter, she's nine. So I know as a parent, that affects how she eats. And if she doesn't eat before school, that's one thing. But mm-hmm. let alone if she eats something mm-hmm. that's bad. It can affect her mood, especially right. females. Girls and the you know food what you're saying. <laughs> have an effect <laughs> on our attitude. Woo. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir, single dad. Right. You better feed that girl that's, right. <laughs> I, we can't even leave the house in the morning without that's a whole ball game. And let alone, like you said, what she eats, um, mm-hmm. as opposed to just throwing in bacon and eggs and so absolutely. forth. To know, absolutely, absolutely. You know, what, and, what, and everybody can't eat the same thing. True, exactly. The exactly. Kids, kids uh, need to uh, know. There's certain things that make them feel a certain way, right. and other things make them feel well. Right. So uh, I know when I was growing up, eclairs, they were so sweet that they would have an effect on my body. But other people could eat them and enjoy them. Right. So we need to know what makes us behave the way we do. That's exactly right. Um, let's flip it a little bit, and we're going to come back about that, too. Um, let's, let's flip it for a quick minute. I wanted to ask you something what is the your your bail reform as mm. far as dealing with the bail reform? Explain it a little bit to me because that was real right interesting. There, didn't you do? I had to so, go jump right yeah, into you, you it. You had to yeah. jump right there. Right to so it. So I mean, I mean, no slowing down, just bam, straight at it. Because it's serious. It's, it's, oh, so, it's, but it's, it's, it's serious. so serious it's and something people serious. need to know about because this is for real. I um, this this particular uh, venture started after I read the book, The New Jim Crow. If you haven't read it, make sure you do. The New Jim Crow? The New Jim Crow. Uh, The New Jim Crow has to do with the way, uh, uh, especially black men, but black women now too, uh, are mass incarcerated. But also, um, it taught me a lot of things about the criminal justice system, things I had seen but hadn't really paid attention to. Right. So, you know, we have people in jail, even prison now, never had a trial because of bail. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What? Bail holds people hostage because they might put a bail on someone that can't raise the bail. You can't raise the bail. You can't even go to trial. You can't, yeah. So you just sit in jail waiting on to even get bail before you even... There's a young man... 14 or 15 years old in, in New York, I believe, got arrested for something about a book backpack and was in prison with grown men most of his life when they realized this boy couldn't make bail because he was a foster care child and his foster care mother couldn't get him the bail. I believe this story is in that book. And wow. they finally got him released. You know this um, project, Innocence Project? Right. They right. got him out. Okay. And he did not know the life today. Because this is a whole new this life. This is a whole new ball game, yeah. This is a whole How new How long life. was he in there? You said about 10 he years? He had been there? No, it was longer than 10 years. Mm. He was like 35 or something, 40 when he got out. And he wanted to be what he saw 
walking on the streets. Right. And when he realized he had lost so much of his life, he eventually a free man committed suicide. Wow, because he couldn't keep up with the society. It was all different. It was he a didn't life know. he didn't know. Oh my goodness. And that's what we're releasing our men into when they come out of prison. We gotta find a way not only when people serve their time, their civil rights need to be restored. Because right. that's a whole nother Jim Crow all by itself. Right. Now let me ask you this since we own the speaking of restoring rights. Yeah. Amendment four. Yeah. I'm voting yes. I'm voting yes. Tell me about Amendment 4. Well, well, that's, what, what, I, that's what I said. Uh, when a person has served their time, their rights need to be restored when their time is restored. When their freedom is restored, they should be free. Should be done. They should be completely free. They right. should be free to work without, without having that thing over their head about felons. Right. They're no longer a felon. They've served their time. They've done. They should be able to vote. And they right. should be able to do everything any other civilian is able to do. They've served their time. They're done. Right. They're done. Right. Right. I plan to do that. Yes, ma'am. With, along with other legislators. I believe there are other legislators there wanting to do it. I don't know why they don't. Right. You know. <laughs> well, we don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> what we don't know. We don't, we don't know. know what we don't know. <laughs> right. Right. And um, here, too. Tell me about it. now. This this going to jump a little bit back into a little bit back into healthcare, but also um, I see you got your notes there, so we're going to go by your 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 itinerary. So you <laughs> yes, man. Yeah, I'm just kind of all mm -hmm. over the place. And uh, mm -hmm. now with here, um, I see where you say that you know you want to strengthen families by making sure that all the families can you know we can provide healthcare to each one of the family, you know, to all of the families. Now, you know, they got all of the talks, especially from the other side, where they're saying, well, we're going to run out of money, you're going to bankrupt the, you know, that I just heard it on a radio station this morning. I'm thinking, well, how? So when uh, John Conyers was uh, initiating all of this, uh, it's called HR 676, research it a little bit. Yes, uh, when he was researching this, it turned out the Congressional Budget Office, CBO, had already um, estimated its cost to give us over $300 trillion in savings. Wow. Now, it may be billions. I may be exaggerating the number. It may be billions. Whatever it is, it's a lot of savings. Right, right. Because right. we save on administrative costs. Okay. We're saving on a lot of the premiums that insurance companies are charging because they're getting a greater profit. Right, right. We're saving on... Just good health care, good um, nourishment. Our bodies won't be as sick. Right. We won't need as many doctor visits. We won't need as many meds. Right. Especially right So here. Big Pharma is also a part of our problem. It's a big part of the problem. Big part of the problem. But you asked me about strengthening families. Health care is only one facet of that. Uh, of course, education is another facet. However, I believe we need to throw families a lifeline. They, they are struggling. They are working two and three jobs trying to make ends meet. Yes. And the ends still don't meet. Uh, they have child care that costs almost as much as their rent and their mortgage. The, the child care makes it to where you almost cannot work. I mean, because if you work a job... You're gonna pay three, four hundred dollars in just childcare, but if you one budget, single parent, so forth. If you got more than one child, it's more than oh, three hundred dollars. Exactly. And uh, it, it, in this today's time, we have parents who are trying to find a way to get all of their children babysat right. for as little as possible. Of course. When children age one to five, and and, and, and even a little older can't afford today to be babysat. They need to be educated. That's when their brain is like a sponge. Right. So sitting a kid in front of a TV and feeding him three meals a day is just not enough anymore. Right. We've right. got to find good quality child care that is affordable. Right. And it's a national security risk. Right. If the uh, federal government doesn't come in and do something to help our children. We're literally going to be children of the corn over here. 
Yeah. We've got yes. to create a national imperative for our children and our families. Right. True. Because, you know, we need children to grow into great leaders. So we have a, a great America, right. really great America. Right. And right. if we're not taking care of our children and educating our children and taking care of our families, which is the backbone of America, we're going to be like children of the corn. Right. Right. Yeah. That's that's. Yeah, that's the, that's a big thing um, that I was seeing, um, you know, like in this particular election period, you know, you got education, which that's, you know, mm -hmm. you've got that um, times 10. Mm -hmm. um, we also need to make sure our parents have well-paying jobs and that those jobs have a livable wage. Right. If we meet them with the child care and uh, the health care. The livable wage will give them some time to be present with their children, right. to instill good character in their children. There's no time for it right now. It's no, like right sit now down, you shut gotta up. Go, you right now, sit down, shut up. I got yep. things to do. But Send them you, over to the babysitter. Exactly. Yeah. But if you can be present with your children and teach them the ways that your grandparents taught you right. and your parents taught you, instill in them the character and the pride of their ancestry, right, right. the customs of their family. Right. They're really raising themselves today, and we need to go back. I hate to say it, we need to go forward, backwards. Yeah, that's the only way we can do that. That's the way, that's the only way. That's, that's right. Now, tell me about the, um, and, and this something I'm even interested in here, your plan for affordable housing. The plan for affordable housing, because you can tell that it seems that it's just a crisis. I watched, I even did a podcast maybe about six months ago. Um, I think it was Ben Carson talking with the, uh, you know, with the, right, exactly. So and, uh, Ben Carson and, and this and he, character. He had no answers. No, no, no. Well, he had no he's answers. talking about raising rent. He's not talking, he's talking about raising rent in, in housing projects. Right. Where Ludicrous. people can't afford nothing as it people is. People can't afford it all. Can't afford it as it is. About raising rent. Because in my opinion, this current regime, the Trump Yoho regime, Yoho right. is my opponent. Gotcha. So the Trump Yoho regime is all about for profit corporations and, and, and nothing about the people. My campaign is all about the people. My, my whole reason for running is for the people. Right. This is a we the people campaign. And every initiative I have is for the people. I mean, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I've raised my kids. I've raised my grandkids. I've helped with them. We're yeah, I saw you say that's what you spend spare, your spare time. I've spent most of my time doing that. Right. And they're all good. And they spread out over the U.S. They're too. All, all I, over I the U.S. I gave them roots and right. wings. Right. Once right. they got what they needed to get, I felt confident that they could do what they needed to do wherever they needed to go. That's God beautiful. will plant them where they need to be. That's true. I believe in that. Okay. So, um... I'm good. I could sit back and watch TV and garden and do the things that I love, travel. But this new America is not where I want my grandchildren to grow up. It's not the way I want my neighbors and friends' children to grow up. This new America has to change. I didn't see anybody coming to rise up to do it. God planted it in me, and I'm here I am, Lord. Send me. Right. Right. I'll go. Because that was my next question. Had you done politics before? I or? have. I was a Gainesville City Commissioner, not <clears throat> because I was a politician. It was because, I'm telling you, I saw these same things same issue. in my city. Gotcha. We've got, in Gainesville, and I started researching the district, one, the fifth largest income gap in the nation. There are people over here with a lot of money and people over here with no money, and there's no middle class. Wow. There's nobody in the middle. That's got to be fixed. Got to. The middle class used to be the backbone. They used to be the right. They used they to be used everything. To be, they used right. to be everything. That was everything. The middle it class. Was everything. You based it how good your middle class exactly. was doing on what on, the future could go. As where the middle could, class right. goes, so goes everything America. else. Go up. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. And that was just the rich or the poor. Mm -hmm. Period. It's, you either got money. Now or you, you just have got it or you don't got it. It's the one percenters. And the 99 percenters. And we are all in the 99 percent. Wow. And these are the people that I'm working for. 
and only people that I'm working for. That's what I'm talking about. All right, well, Miss Yvonne, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to run a couple of commercials. Um, yeah, I'm running a couple of commercials real quick, take a quick break, and then we are going to come back. We are here with Miss Yvonne Hayes Hansen, and she is running for uh, Congress, Democratic, uh, U.S. Congressional District 3. We are doing that, and we're going to be right back after this commercial break. And this is the Ch -ch -ch Johnny Mac Show. Let's go. Street fashions. Visit kickdoor.com. That's K I C D O R.com. Kickdoor.com. We pledge allegiance to the grind. Pledge allegiance to the grind. Fuck, fuck, fuck your team, they don't get it like mine. Kickdoor. We never take a knee when it comes to the work. You don't work, you don't eat, and grandma, you don't sleep until you are doing more than making ends meet. Kickdoor. Give me. One way or the other. You hear me, boy. Living the American dream. Pledge allegiance to the crown. Have you ever been pulled over by the police at 4 a.m.? Drinking after a party? Is your landlord violating your lease? You going through divorce, adoption, or child support? If, 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 if so, then you need Legal Shield. Legal Shield gives you the law in your pocket through an easy to use app for just $20 a month. Always have 24 hour access to an attorney near you. If you need this, email me at macworld2020 at gmail.com. That's macworld, M-A-C-K-W-O-R-L-D 2020 at gmail.com. And put the law in your pocket. For all your custom printing needs, be sure to visit LeSureCustomPrintings.com. That's L-E-S-U-R-E, CustomPrinting.com. They got you on all your custom printing needs. T-shirts, stickers, posters, car decals. They got you on all that. Be sure to visit the website or on Facebook and Instagram. LeSureCustomPrinting.com. It goes down. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Right. Oh, yeah. And we are back. Exactly. We are back. It is Johnny Mac show. We are here interviewing Miss Yvonne Hayes Henson. And um we just filling in. We're talking about a couple of things here. Um she is definitely um definitely the candidate that we need. I mean, very, very, very highly well educated. Um, very educated within the school system. Dealing with children, she has grandchildren, she has children, all of her children are successful, um, spread out all over the United States, doing their own thing as well. Um, let's see here. Now, I had a question too. What was your, what, what is your take for the, uh, I seen about you were looking, for, we're do, going to be doing veterans assistance for homes and rapid housing for the homeless when you get, um, you know, once you get elected. Tell me about that and what's, how the plan is going to look for those. For so that. let me tell you why I say that. Uh, first of all, uh, in, while I was a city commissioner, I found uh, we, we opened Grace Marketplace. Uh, we bought, as city commissioner, we bought a old prison that was just abandoned and we turned it into a homeless shelter. Okay. Uh, right. and, but before that, I found so many veterans sleeping on the ground. Wow. Lots of veterans in Gainesville, probably everywhere sleeping. These are on veterans the that have served for the United States. Yes, Army. sir, buddy. And they have made sure that this place still stands and, and still is free. It still is free. And they sleep, but on they the got to sleep on the ground. They sleeping on the ground. That is crazy. Sleeping under tents makes no sense at all. And, and they get uh, uh, compensation from the military, <clears throat> but again, you mentioned affordable housing. Right. They do get a stipend. It just wasn't enough. There used to be a GI Bill for men when they came out to get a house or a home. Right. Uh, they're just, their stipend isn't enough today. 
Wow. It's because the cost of living keeps rising and right. wages and it's stipends remain down. the same. Right. So it is like it's going down when things keep going Everything up. Everything else is stay, going up and you and just you still stay on in, the ground. You stay in yeah. the same. Right. We've got to change that, man. We've got to change that. And our veterans deserve so much more, but the homeless are in the same boat. Some of them don't even have a stipend, but some of them do. I found many of them are getting a check. It's just not enough money to put them in a house and feed them and clothe them and everything else that they need. Right. So, mm -hmm. no, yeah. I was saying I see a lot of um, like I volunteer here um, at Interfaith, um, you know, the Interfaith, the homeless. Oh, there was one here. Yeah, there's one the here. Homeless shelter. Well, well, yeah, I think they shelter a few, but I know I go down there and I help them out with the, uh, you know, they it's a pantry as the well. Feeding, they do feed mm -hmm. and so forth. And yeah, you see a lot of them. They say that they are veterans. I didn't know that they even get a stipend, but it don't look like that they have nowhere to do. They look, it's pretty bad. They get a stipend. It's not enough. And there are veteran assistance programs that don't seem to be moving fast enough. So what I declared before I left, and, and uh, it's still in service, we gave a whole dormitory over to the veterans program and the veterans assistance People took it over because they didn't have enough beds, is what they say. But this particular dormitory had 200 beds. So any homeless vet can go there now and not only get uh, housing, but they also get any other assistance that they need, health care, food, nutrition, the whole nine yards. It's still not enough. We don't want to have to house them in a homeless program. They should have their own homes. So um, I know that the federal government offers this. I just don't know why it's not being rapidly uh, facilitated. If we had 30 vets, and I already know we can do this, if we had 30 vets ready to move into a, a studio apartment building, we, we could build it for them. Right. We could build it for them and they could afford it. However, we don't have that in existence. First right. of all, we don't have a, a building with just studio apartments in it. They're all two and three bedrooms in the rent in Gainesville. I don't know about Ocala. The rent in it's, Gainesville is almost untouchable. That's the reason why I had to, a little bit of why I, I kind of chose to come this way. As opposed because to there, the rent in Gainesville was so ex, ex, exorbitant. The ga yeah, the only thing that would be good about that would be if you were to want the renter, because I know it's a college property and mm -hmm. so forth. But even for that, it's like a highway robber. I mean, it's like a... You know, it's almost like you're living in New York. The yes, prices up yes. there. So it's they, they, the new commission has been doing some seminars on affordable housing uh, and how they're going to build affordable housing. But my thing is, if the rent is still eight, nine, and up, hundred dollars and up, it's not affordable. We, what we need to be discussing is what is affordability. Before you even start this building, right. you need to know what affordability is. Now, I have been doing some research back when Corrine Brown was um, Congresswoman. She was the Veterans Affairs uh, senior senior person, right. and she built something in Jacksonville overlooking the water for vets that was affordable. Right. I'm looking at that model for every county I will serve. I do not want to see a vet who has valiantly fought for this country sleeping on the ground during my turn. There you it go. will there not you go. happen. There you go. We like that. We like that. <laughs> Definitely. Now, what do you think as far as we're going to talk uh, the economy a little bit, I mean the, uh, the environment a little bit, with the Red Sea and, and the, the toxic red blooms? Right. Red tide and the toxic blooms. Right. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Well, everybody blaming Rick Scott. It's not just Rick Scott, but Rick Scott is a part of that whole system who is only concerned with profits. And Rick Scott's running against Bill Nelson exactly, right now. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. what they did before they could get their good was put people in place who had no concerns for the environment, who weren't scientists, who were science deniers pretty much. Wow. And so they rolled back all of the regulations and protections that we had for our environment. And this led to this. So, so they are allowing pesticides, sugar, and all kinds of other things roll off into our water. 
uh, they say it started down by Lake Okeechobee where it was supposed to be filtered, but it got into our regular mainstream. And because of these things, it makes these toxic blooms grow faster. Now, red tide is a natural occurrence. It occurs every so often. Right. Nature creates that. Right, but right. this toxic algae blooms has exacerbated the problem. And we have had 18, 19, maybe 2,000 tons of marine life that's been killed. I say murdered. Wow fish that we could have eaten, but it's life. Right. Fish, alligators, tons and tons of fish. <clears throat> Just, Just dying. Criminal. And the thing about and it if is, it's getting it. into them, right. what is it doing to us? That was my question. Like the food, because you know, people fishing still and they're, you know, so. Absolutely. Now these pesticides and this particular water is getting to our aquifer. That's where we get our drinking water from. Right. I think these people have forgotten we only have one planet. There's no planet B. Right. And maybe Trump thinks he's going there with his new space. Space, uh, the, yeah. Yeah, uh, his new space. Space cadet space, army or whatever they're going to do. Space yeah. department or his new space. Star Wars Star or whatever Wars. he's going to do. Yeah. Maybe he thinks he's going to live on another planet. That we have yet to discover if life can exist. Right. But we have the planet that God gave us and right. we need to take care of it. And exactly. that's what I intend to do. They moved all the sciences out of the uh, EPA department. We got to put them back. Right. Right. <laughs> mm, crazy. It's just crazy. So tell me about yourself. You said you were a single dad. Tell me about that. Yeah, I'm a uh, yeah, I'm a single father. I've uh, I got two daughters. My oldest daughter, she lives in Memphis with her mother. She's twelve now. Then my youngest, she's nine. I've raised her technically since birth. I think she was about six months or something around the time when I just had it full time. But. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, originally from Memphis, Tennessee, but I moved to Pensacola, Florida um, first. And I lived in Pensacola maybe, I don't know, maybe about seven, eight years. My youngest was born there. What and, brings you to Ocala? Okay, so yeah, was in Ocala, uh, was living in Pensacola, moved to Panama City Beach, met somebody Ocala. and got married, mm -hmm. um, moved to, with that person to Gainesville. Oh, you lived in Gainesville. I lived That's in Gainesville. Where I'm from. Yeah, Latchua County. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Latchua. I went to, uh, was there for a minute, and uh, then I ended up leaving that and moved to uh, to Ocala. And this was a little bit after my. I had a, you know, like I told you, I had a aneurysm which caused a stroke or whatever. Um, that's why I got the cane and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and when that happened, at the time I couldn't drive. I was waiting for them to install some equipment so that I could drive, so I couldn't drive. But my job was in Ocala. Mm. I thought Ocala was just another part of uh, Alachua. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. I just thought, oh, like, man, it's a long way to work. Mm -hmm. But I never even thought. I just, it was always the same place until, you know, some stuff kind of put the stuff in perspective. Like, okay, these are two different counties. It's a whole different ball game. And uh, I ended up moving to Ocala. Like, okay, well, let me move here because this is close. So I can Absolutely. catch Ubers and stuff Absolutely. to work. I just get her registered in school in Ocala. Started off, I ain't gonna lie, when I first came, I was like, I hate this. I thought I was like, because, you know, from, I came to Florida for the beach. I'm like, this is yeah, Mississippi. Yeah, this is a long way from the beach over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, you know, but after, though, about six, seven months in, I realized this is a... More affordable place to live, huh? Yeah, well, more affordable, and then it's, they got, it's real kid-friendly. Yeah, now, for an adult, it may not be, but for, for kids, it's always, we always, always activities and mm -hmm. sports and, you know, different things like Wonderful. that that's going on, so... I kind of just... Uh, and so compare the difference between uh, uh, housing affordability in, in Marion and in Alachua. Okay, so I live in a two-bedroom loft that I pay about $800 a month for. Uh, it's kind of high, but yeah. in Gainesville, you know that same loft would be 1200 Right. Easy. Right. No, I and know. probably I not know. even be as nice. This one's yeah, semi-nice where I live at. That loft would not... If in, in You know... It, Mm -hmm. You would be paying a lot. And so in my opinion, and this is just uh, me, but this is the opinion I'm taking with me to Congress because I fully intend to be there. Yeah, we will. Uh, we when will. you're paying $800 and $1,200 a month for housing, 
it should be something you own. Right. I don't think rent should be paid in those denominations for rent. Because you'll never be able to own you'll anything never paying eight hundred, nine hundred dollars a month. I right. think there should be some housing stock for ownership at that level. Right. And uh, unless we uh, raise your wages or lower the rent, you know things are not going back down. No. We're going to have to actually build some housing stock that is more affordable. Right. And that's the way I, I see things. And I've been talking to uh, developers, realtors, chambers of commerce, and we've got to find a better way to help people live a better life. Right. And they Correct. don't have to be these expensive houses. It's just, just a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house with, with carpenters. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all in a little yard. In a little in a yard. yard. That's, That's all you need. In a little yard, something you own and can be proud of. Right. Ownership is the American dream. Right. And we got to return that dream back to our people because they're losing it. And, and I do believe there are a lot of people walking around with a lot of rage inside of them. Yeah. Like one paycheck away from the rage. Yeah, and, and even with that, that, that one paycheck, don't let them get sick. Exactly. If you get sick, number one, you got to pay for medication, mm -hmm. but number two, you got to miss work. Right. Number three, once you do that, you are a paycheck behind. You are a paycheck. And there or we more. Go. And, or you're, more. Right, and you're and, working. And you are an, a typical example of the uh, cause that right. has me running because, in my opinion, uh, what happened to you, had you been taking good care of yourself, would not have happened. Right. They have meds to prevent that. Uh, you probably was trying to just live your life and take care of your child and wouldn't take care of you. Well, I had to, well, it was an AVM, so it was random. Okay. I actually, I work out all the time. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, if you go, it's, it's random. Matter of fact, I had just played a game of basketball the night before the stroke happened. Like, I, I'm always athlete. I'm in the gym. Like, I go to the gym every day now because I get the membership uh, free. Are you saying I, blood pressure is not an indicator? No, yeah, I, cause they, they said that there was no, there's no way to tell. If you Google AVM, it's no way to tell when they are going to happen. They just, they just randomly happen. Now the AVM, you know, it makes, it's where something goes in your brain. It happened on the left side, the right side got, you know, where the stroke was at. But, um, now I was actually healthy. That's why I was able to recuperate fast. So well. Had I not been, you know, I've been, I was an athlete in the past and so forth. And even then, like I said, I just got through playing ball the night before. If, uh, had I not been and had I not had a pretty okay diet, I'd slip a little bit. I'm not the or, perfect or with a healthy it. healthy body. Yeah. If I had, had I not, this thing could have, cause they expected it to be worse than that. I wasn't was. even going to make it. I couldn't, you know, and I had to learn to walk again. I had to learn to, uh, Luckily, I kept my speech. I never got the slur well, and so no forth. There's no detection of anything other than the cane. Right, yeah. Every time people see me, that's what they right, say. They right. never knew. But right. the fact that you know all this technology for what you're doing now seems like it could be a launching pad for a great career. I hope so. Yeah. I'm hoping. That's that's kind of where the... I've been in journalism like pretty much you know, uh, on and off all my life. On my own. Like When I was in junior high school... I mean, no, yeah, no, it was in high school. When I was in high school, to make extra money, I wrote for the school newspaper, which that was free, but I couldn't really say what I wanted to. So on the side, I used to have a newspaper like that I underground made, newspaper. an underground newspaper uh -huh. where I could say what you wanted to. Say what I wanted to in there. I could kind of talk. I wouldn't talk about nobody, but I would say what talk I wanted to. Talk about the issues. Yeah, and, and issues, stuff going on in the school. It might have been a, a fight may have happened or whatever. I mean, a, a ba the basketball game. You, you sound got, like you have a little political leanings there. Oh, that's all I want to do. I, I, I'm You're considering I'm running, running. I'm running in school board for school board maybe next year. If Wonderful. with. I'm asking Miss Joyce to kind of help, help me out. Groom you. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. a that's yeah. Mm -hmm. She like and I'm know. glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell. I can tell you got that bite. I'm trying. <laughs> we try. Okay, okay. Yeah, we trying. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, so yeah, that's pretty much there. Um, the other thing I want to talk about too, your education chair at the NAACP, mm -hmm. and I think you're about to be the president, or you are oh, the no, president. Okay, so. I, I've been on the NAACP almost all my life, I meant, um, okay. pretty much. But um, I joined the e-board, the executive board, uh, about 10, 12 years ago. Okay. So I, what I ended up chairing first was WIN, that's Women in the NAACP. Okay. And uh, I moved to chair of the NAACP. However, the president, we hope, stays president 
for life. Oh, <laughs> well, they can't do it for life, but she's very good. Right, right. I was president-elect of the University of Florida Black Alumni Association, and now I'm the president. Okay. So I'm the president you. of the University of Florida Black Alumni That's what Association. That's it is. Okay. Yes. That's what it was. Okay. Got you. Got you. Um, let's see here. Now, I look, think that we've covered a majority of the questions that I had for you. Um, was there anything else that you want to put out there or anything maybe that I didn't cover or you wanted to re-implement on? Anything, um, anything there? So, um, in addition to, um, of course, uh, investing in public education and, uh, of course, creating world-class schools all over this country. There we go. Changing the way the Department of Education works with states to do that. Uh, I also want to ensure that the last education act Obama had before he left is called Every Student Succeeds Act. Okay. Uh, the um, ESA is what it's called. It is the federal program that Obama left. I honestly don't know what's happening with its budget. Mm. I want Go to figure, find right. it because it can revolutionize the way a school works with its community. Right. I just believe, and as a principal, I, I use this strategy. Schools and communities make a strong America. Yes, they do. Yes, uh, they do. Schools working with communities will give us a strong America. And ESA includes some of those uh, strategies. Right. Uh, at my school, uh, I didn't know it then, but I know it now. It was a world class school. Right. I know that I had visitors from all over the world come see what we were doing to make our school great. Um, it was just another chore for me, but now I realize, man, people were really interested in what we were doing, and we should have almost written a guide for right. it. However, Obama did. Right. When I read this ESA program, right. the ESA strategies, and the way he intended to fund states to fund schools right. through ESA was to build this collaboration of partners communities, parents, and students working together to build strong schools and strong students. Right. Uh, similar to what we had, and I didn't know it then, that we had something special. Right. And we need to get back to that, and this is what's missing in our schools today. It's all about testing and testing and testing. That's all they and do is take so tests. so many more things that children can do to excel beyond tests. So, yeah. just test and so test. uh, that's going to be one of my initiatives. Trade schools, I right. hope I can make free. I'm going to try to find a way so that parents who need well-paying jobs can find a couple of times a week to go in and find something that they feel good about. Right, right. To learn to do it. So they're well, not stuck in the same old job just forever and ever and ever. Stuck in a job they hate. Right. Forever. Right. Right. That doesn't pay them well. No. We got to do something about it. And it causes a stress, too. You know, the it stress causes it changes. stress. Yeah. You got to go because you got to pay your bills. Right. We need to find a way to change that scene. And it can be changed. And it can be done. Right. And I intend to do that. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, I know that cultural biases exist in our schools. Right. And it's a problem. And I believe we can use some of the ESA strategies to change that, as well as um, helping kids out of debt that's going to college. They already. I saw that. I saw that. I need to. I need to hear back now. I look. I got lucky with mine. I got my student. My student loan paid off because it wasn't a huge student loan, but. There's people. I know a person right now. Hundreds a couple and of people. Two hundreds and more than that thousand dollars in debt. Yeah, thousands. I mean they like fifty, sixty thousand dollars in debt. Like they would never pay that off probably. Well they unless they, they hit they the lot. They will, of them. but who wants to go to school just to work to pay their loans off? Right. That is not so I think the country, the United States of America, is making a lot of profit off of interest. Oh, yeah. And we can fix that. 
Right. I, I, I hope to do that. I got a lot on my plate, but I, I'm usually good at task mastering things. Right. If people will work with me, and I believe I am a strong collaborator, that I can get a lot of these things fixed very quickly. I don't intend to go there to stay. I intend to go there to fix some things. And then I want to get back to my own life, if you right. know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so now, with, with you being a, in Congress, I mean, I know you're... Florida congressional district, and I'm this just because I'm not as familiar with who does what. So you'll be working for the United States. You'll be working for these things that you're talking. This is going to be for Florida, of course, but this is the United States. Well, yes, and it's general. hard to teach people that when you're calling for donations all over the country. Right, right, uh, right. The decisions we make don't just affect our third congressional district. Right. It affects the United States of America. Right, 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 exactly. Period. 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 Um, uh, I think I was talking about the student debt. So, yeah, yeah, yeah student debt. So, okay. what I hope to do is uh, find a way. I, I was telling people about the way I went to school. And uh, I, I didn't pay a lot of money, and I believe we can restore that. I remember exactly how it was done. There was a Pell Grant matched with a federal loan. Uh, the federal loan had very low interest, if any. Probably just covered uh, administrative costs. And if you went into a certain career, right, a career that America needed, right, uh, you could get a percentage uh, canceled every year. Right. Every year you worked in that field, a percentage of your loan was canceled. It used to be that way? Oh, God, yes. Because I Still worked. Still really? Yes. I, because wow. I worked in special ed, I okay. got a certain percentage canceled. Right. And if I worked in a high poverty area or a high crime area. Where they needed. Where they needed good teachers. Wow. I got a certain percentage uh, canceled. And you're going to try to bring that back. Absolutely. There absolutely. We because we need nurses staffed at a certain capacity level to keep our people well. Right. And, and everybody's scared to go to school nowadays because nowadays kids kind of know. You, you mm-hmm. get, catch them coming out of high school. First thing they say is, I'm not, I can't afford that. I ain't going. They just try to go and work or work little odd jobs. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and they're college, young. College is becoming a distant. They don't right. even talk about it. It's not they even a thing they, they, in they, high school. They, they, they don't not, think right. it's possible anymore. Right. We got to return that possible dream right. and make it so that it's not crippling them when they graduate. Right. Yeah, you know, we got to return. Everybody who wants to go to college should be able to go to college. Because that's how I feel. I feel that when you go the way it is and the way it's set up is you go to high school and then let's say you're going to the, you know, you're in the 12th grade. Mm-hmm. You've got a friend going to the military. Mm-hmm. You've got somebody, a couple and of friends got scholarships. Now. We still need that. Oh, yeah, we still need that. To go to the military. Yeah, which that's good. Uh-huh. And then you got scholarships. But yes. then what about then? So you got Bob over here. Who can't get a scholarship. He can't get a scholarship. And, and, ain't going no, to the Army. Can't, he has no to, plans to go to the Army. To the he army might end up going because he has no he, plans. He needs some money. He right. Some, but, however, there are other careers. I, I talked about teachers and I talked about nurses. But I what about also envision, I envision future jobs. Right. We need people to major in marine biology right about now. Oh, yes, especially with with this red, with tide, red tide and toxic. And we, yeah. we need people to be able to study that and figure out how to fix it. We also need STEM careers. Right. We need kids to start thinking about STEM. We need kids to start thinking about solving uh, or finding a cure for cancer. Right. Right. Diabetes yeah. and some of these other health care illnesses that are plaguing Americans. Right. So we can. So it's still all about the health. It's of room Americans. all there. Yeah. It's, it's room all. all there. It's room for all that. Right. And right. and if we say if you major in this, we'll do this. Right. If you major in this, we'll do this. You know what I'm saying? If you major I didn't know it in used this, to be like that. that it is used awesome. to be that. That way. makes sense. That would make somebody you know, say, "I'm finna go so I can go be a doctor. Absolutely. I'm finna go try no, to be." No, we don't need. Hey, we don't need no more lawyers. Everybody right now, people pop well, up and hey, they say, "I don't want to do no more do lawyers. Don't go to law school." <laughs> say, well, hey, no, we don't need no more lawyers. Right. Hey, we need you to go study what's happening to our water. Right. We need right. you to study. What's happening with cancer? Right. We need you to study what's happening with diabetes. Right. 
Right. These are the things we need to know more about, and we're willing to help you learn them. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's it, man. That's, that's it in a nutshell mm-hmm. there. Um, okay. Well, it looked like we touched. A lot of things. We touched I certainly enjoyed talking something? to you. I, yes, I wish you very well in your life, and I hope uh, yes, when ma'am. I get the conference, I have to say it that way. See, that's how we talk. That's, that's how I talk how, to you, speaking into we existence. Like, we don't, so, right. so when I get the conference, I hope I make some uh, changes that will affect you and your daughter's life. It, it, oh, it definitely will. Question. Last question, too, before we go. Um, as far as uh, I just had it. Johnny, Johnny, think, think, think. Uh-oh. Yeah, I had a brain freeze. Um, it's okay. We have, hey, we call them senior moments, but I don't know what you're going to call it. You're too young. <laughs> right. Um what was I, I wanted to? It was a, it was a good. I know it's when it's gone, when it's over with. I'm gonna be thinking, man. I should, I had okay. it. It was right on the. Right. But um, maybe we'll do this again. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. We definitely wanna, okay. definitely wanna, uh, you know, make sure that we uh, get everything situated. Um, any shout outs or anything anywhere you want to tell people where they can go, where they can support, where they can make donations? Absolutely, Yvonneforcongress.com. I need your. Support. I need volunteers. I definitely need donations. I am operating on a razor thin budget. Uh, Anything you can do will help. It could be fifteen dollars. I would appreciate it. So, EvonneForCongress.com. You can learn more about my campaign. You can sign up to volunteer, and you can donate. All of the above. EvonneForCongress.com. All right. And what is the uh, what is the last day to? For, the, for my listeners to register to vote. You know October the, 9th. October 9th. If they register by October 9th, they can vote in the November 6th election. November. And the election is November 6th. November 6th. Uh, November. The election is November 6th. I believe if you vote by mail, they may be dropping around October 1st. Uh, right. Early voting is usually... 25th, October 25th, I think is the early voting, right? Early voting may start October, it's 25th. October 25th. It's usually two weeks before November 6th. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, Yvonne, it's been awesome talking to you. It's been I'm my excited, pleasure as well. Motivated. Um, going to make sure that you get in there. We know you're going to get in there. Um, oh, this is what I want you to tell me about. The, di- the the last thing, tell me the difference between you and your opponent. Your opponent oh is... Goodness. It, and your opponent again is Ted Yoho. Ted Yoho. And right now he's in Congress, correct? He's in Congress making all the decisions. Now, is he a teacher? Or he's, he, he was he a veterinarian. Educated? He's a veterinarian. Okay. And uh, he, he's chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And it appears to me and everybody else that he's only concerned with foreign affairs. Mm-hmm. What's happening in somebody else's country and not out. Yeah, he's not worried about any of the stuff we just got finished well, talking about. Well, and whatever right. Donald Trump says, uh, he endorses. He'll gotcha. go on the air and endorse it. And more recently, the other night, he was on Fox News talking about <laughs> Dr. Ford should have spoken up earlier about Kavanaugh. Give me a break. Wow. Wow, wow. wow. Ain't nothing but the devil. Man. Yeah. We just got, we're going to get you in there. We know that. that, That's the mission. The mission is, uh, we definitely going to get you in there. I hope so, uh, because these guys are all about lining their own pockets uh, all around. The tax breaks are all for them. Uh, They're taking our school systems and turning it into private schools. Creating detention facilities so they can make money off of separating families. That's horrible. Private prisons. Yes, they're making money off of locking people up. Go figure that. And how long has he? How long has he? It was he the. He. How long has he been in office? You know, what he did like I think two three terms, terms. Three terms. Three terms. He said so, he was only going to do three. He was supposed to come out this year. Well, he is anyway. He's, He's coming, coming anyway. Yeah. <laughs> He's coming anyway. He's coming out. <laughs> Yes, you right about that. Right. Well, Mr. Vaughn, it's been my pleasure um, speaking with you today. I've enjoyed it. And uh, definitely, we're going to keep the run going. I'm going to go live um, even the night of the, uh, the night of the election. I'm going to go live and do a show where I'm going to be sitting in front of the TV, me and my daughter, and Y'all rooting and cheering. Oh, you're going to have oh, no, a little watch party. Yeah, yeah well, if they have some here, we may even they come. They probably you know, will we have always, a watch party uh, here. Yeah, we're here all the time. Um, okay. She comes with me and helps me. That's great. Sign That's great. Envelope. You're getting her uh, 
inducted early. Oh, yeah, already. Like, right, yeah, right. Good for you. Good for you. Yes, ma'am. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me to do this and yes, uh, helping me get my message out because uh, this was a great way to do it. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I thank you for uh, allowing my platform to do so. It's uh, something a little bit different that I've been doing, but I've always had that politic feel for a while, so it's kind of give me a way I feel good that I'm really. That's a good thing. Yes, ma'am. All right. right. Well, that's it. And uh, I definitely thank you. And this will be on Facebook. Um, Everybody be able to hear the shows. I'll send it to you once I get done. uh, Maybe later on. Send me a friend request or something. Uh, yeah, I had to send you a firm request to send you the the video. Yes, but to uh, to send you the audio, I can just send you a link uh, in a, to maybe my a couple email. hours. Okay. Yeah, I can send it to your email. Wonderful, yes, ma'am. and I'll put it on my face my website. Okay, yes, ma'am. Well, I definitely thank you so much for choosing. Uh, <laughs> to say choosing a two. Uh, thank you for uh, coming out and uh, allowing me to do this interview I and getting this going for you. Me. And yes, uh, that's it. And I'm gonna close out. All right, God bless you. All right, God bless. Thank you. For all the hottest and the latest in street fashions, visit kickdoor.com. That's K-I-C-D-O-R.com. Kickdoor.com. We pledge allegiance to the grind. I, I, I pledge allegiance to the grind. Fuck, fuck, fuck your team, they don't get it like mine. Kickdoor, we never take a knee when it comes to work. If y'all working, don't eat, and grandma, you don't sleep until you are doing Kick door, get me one way or the other. You hear me, boy? Living the American dream. Pledge allegiance to the crown. Have you ever been pulled over by the police at 4 a.m. drinking after a party? Is your landlord violating your lease? You going through divorce, adoption, or child support? If, 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 if so, then you need Legal Shield. Legal Shield gives you the law in your pocket through an easy to use app for just twenty dollars a month. Always have twenty four hour access to an attorney near you. If you need this, email me at macworld2020 at gmail.com. That's macworld, M-A-C-K-W-O-R-L-D 2020 at gmail.com and put the law in your pocket.